I really suck at running. So welcome to the first episode of what I'm going to be calling a series of Chasing Apex where I'm looking for different life skills, whether physical or mental, to help me improve that ultimate goal of being the ultimate human being that I possibly can. A lot of it's going to revolve around physical feats and this one is going to start with running. Now this is going to sound weird, but I enjoy sucking at things. Like not in the long term, like I want to be better at whatever it is. I have a goal and have set in my sights. But the good part about sucking at something is you get to work towards something. I don't think enough people in life actually work towards a goal. And I think this leads to a lot of problems. We need something to work towards. We need to fail. We need to succeed. We need to do all of these things. And running is one aspect of my life that I've never been overly great at. I really suck at running. Mile and a half. Nine minute pace, heart rate's too high, cadence isn't bad. I would say I've been more of a bigger frame kind of guy, over 200 pounds. Now I have done half marathons, full marathons in the past, but my marathon time was like four hours and 22 minutes, which is terrible. When I run, I feel like a Clydesdale. I'm just clopping around. So I wanna get better. I want this to ultimately end up as me doing a full marathon at a good clip. I used to be better at it, but I was never efficient at it. So we're gonna do it right this time and I'm gonna document the whole thing. But why running? Why do I want to do running? I just feel better when I do it. There are tons and tons of studies showing that running is better for your overall health, but they're really just linked to cardiovascular health in general. I get that from doing high intensity interval training through CrossFit, through a variety of different things. But here's the thing, when I'm running frequently, everything else improves, my rowing, my biking, my swimming, but it's not the other way around. The more I bike, swim, or do anything other than run does not help me run. But when I am running, I'm sleeping better, I have more mental clarity, and just overall feel good in general. So where, do, where the hell do I even start? I'm fortunate enough to be in Austin, Texas, where there's a lot of things being offered that I haven't seen in other cities. One of them is a dedicated physical therapy place where I can go called Run Lab Austin. I've seen it on other YouTube channels, and through my research, this seemed to be the best place to start. And this was visit number one of two. So this was just the initial consultation, but I learned so much about myself and got such great feedback from the people at Run Lab Austin, mainly Dr. Rhodes. Okay. Today will be a lot of data collection. Okay. So it's gonna be figuring out structurally what is sound on you or not. Um, we're not necessarily gonna be super diagnostic today. If data, 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 we're gonna look at your gait analysis on there. Uh, that's our high frame rate system. In Side note, as much as I do take my shirt off for every workout that I participate in, they actually required it just to see better biomechanics in the breakthrough. In the room. Okay. We're gonna gather that today and then really the next kind of 48 hours is when our gait expert breaks everything down into all the phases and each frame rate and figures out where kind of your biggest anomalies are. Okay. Uh, but today it's just like data, 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 data. Let's build who you are in my brain and our gate analyst, and then a lot of our tech plan. That's what I, that's what I want. Cool, love it. Yeah. All right, so walking form, some components that we were, I was looking at is you, more so on your right side, but really bilateral, you have a slight external swing when you're coming forward. So if you focus more on the knees, you start pointing out as you start your swing phase, oh. and then you pull back in, so. Oh, I see it. It's kind of this whipping motion. Now it's subtle, we're talking a few degrees, but what that's- not efficient. Correct, and what that translates up to is often a little overactivation of TFL. So people will often get like lateral hip tension okay. and build with longer distances, but even walking, that muscle is overactivating. Now the other component that we're looking at, if I pull back and we play again, I'm looking at your foot positioning. So you have a little bit of a whip bilateral in your feet. So you can see it, it's more pronounced when you're running, but you can see it on your left side more so. Yeah. So your heel whips in medially. 
you this are, I feel like I'm flopping. Like a, you are pivoting hard off of your big toe, which is actually why you have a slight curvature of that toe. Okay. Actually, both of them. Yeah. It's just more pronounced on the one side. Higher risk for bunions occurring. Yeah. Because now that metatarsal head, or that basically the proximal point, mm -hmm. is just getting smashed over and over and over again. And so it will build up additional bone, and then it will rub, and then that can cause a bunion. Oh, so that's okay. So if we can start correcting that, the risk of that getting worse goes down. Oh, okay. Which would be nice. Yeah. Right? So that's just kind of right off the bat with your walking mechanic that I'm seeing. Side view, a little stiff in the knee when you land. I don't want to, and again, this is your walking. I don't want to be completely stretched out. So I call it, you know, the peg-legged pirate walk. Yeah. I don't want to be locked out when I hit the ground. That's because I'm stopping, right? Mm hmm That's what so I'm it's feeling. In, it's that inefficiency. Yeah. So I see that, you know, I call it, not to be insulting, but it's like a gym bro walk where I'll have people come in and it's this, it's kind of this clunky, Yeah. I'm walking along and locking it out versus, you almost want to be the power walk, like, hey, I'm an executive and I own this place. Okay. You're coming in, you've got this little knee bend, but it's kind of this like swag to it. Yeah. That's a more efficient walk because you're not stopping every time. You're moving with your momentum. Yeah, see, I didn't even realize. So even when I'm walking, I'm heel heavy. Correct. Yeah. So makes sense little why it translates. subtle change there. Now, when we look at the running mechanic, you can see the whip still happening. Now, it's not as great on the right side, but definitely that left side's whipping. But you, we talk about that knee position. Yeah. Angling out. Again, TFL is going to be overloading that lateral structure, higher risk for IT band syndrome, and lateral pulling of the patella, so patellofemoral pain. So I, I do chance. feel tightness here sometimes mm -hmm. from that. Okay, that is why. So it is doing more than what your glutes should be doing. You, okay. Okay. You push really strong off of your big toe when you're trying to accelerate. That's what's leading to that kind of distortion of the structure in there. Okay. You want big toe to be active, 100%. But not at that 60 that you were talking about? Just not at that point in the gait phase. phase. Okay. You're, you're adding a flourish to the motion. We want it to be a um, little bit more of a rigid motion. And again, this is getting nitpicky, and we'll get into this on your next video. But if we slow you down... You collapse more. Watch your medial ankle line. You, your arch oh, I see. on your left collapses in more. And then that will cause you to whip even okay. further because you're trying to create force with a non-rigid arch, right? We need, it's called the windlass effect. When you have tension in the medial arch line, mm -hmm. it's a rocker mechanism to propel you forward you're not getting the rocker mechanism on the left nearly as much. And so you're trying to gain propulsion at the end by getting this flick. I'm stopping and then starting and stopping. So that's mm -hmm. why I feel, okay. So again, just little inefficiencies, right? You're absolutely right. You do heel strike and you overstride. So if we're to stop that. I'm not over my yeah. foot, right? Correct. Yeah. So I want you're coming out and you're not getting a whole lot of active retraction back underneath your leg. So if we were to stop this, which our high frame weight rates are gonna be a little bit better. So if you look at your right foot, right, that's your contact point. Mm -hmm. Your shin angle, I want closer to parallel. Yeah, you want it underneath me, right? Yep. Yeah. So when it comes down, you're not really moving very much in parallel with the treadmill. I want you to outstretch and then actively pull underneath you more. I want that to be more exaggerated. I got you. Right? Okay. So if it does those B skips and things like that, yeah, they're driving down. That's this active hip extension moment, which then primes the glutes to turn on a lot. So better. really, I'm stopping the motion and coming forward rather than finishing it by pulling under. Correct. Gotcha. Right. Like if you were coasting down a hill in a car. Yeah. You're tapping your brakes every time instead of just letting your body go. I feel it. Right? Yeah. That translates to a lot of excess force through your entire bone structure. Mm -hmm. You're landing like you're peg-legged. That jars, it reverberates up the bone. So stress fracture risk amplifies exponentially. Gotcha. Low back pain. 
amplifies or your risk level for it goes up. Again, you're not actively hurt, which is great. We want to make sure that you don't get that. That's why, yeah, injury prevention was one of the reasons mm-hmm. too. We also look at your pattern. Yeah, I'm consistent. Not even once do I do it right. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll yeah, get no, there. I know. It's just like, I want to see one good one. Right. And then to wrap up, this was just the initial consultation, but I learned enough to at least get me started for my follow-up appointment, which will be in episode two. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe, follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes. And even though I did not expect to get near the amount of information and help from this initial consultation, I did get to leave with some exercises that Dr. Roden gave me just to hold me over for that next appointment. Does this look ridiculous? You know what's not ridiculous? Injuries. Working on muscle memory. So stay tuned again to see if this ridiculousness pays off. <laughs>